G'day Curd Nerds, today we're making Cotswold. Now Cotswold is a traditional English cheese. Uh, it goes with a ploughman's lunch and it's basically a double Gloucester cheese that has a little bit more annatto and it is mixed with uh, dried onions and dried chives and in this recipe I've modified it slightly from the one that's in my book Keep Calm and Make Cheese and I've added a little bit of garlic powder just to give it a bit of a kick. This recipe stems from a request from obviously my lovely wife Kim who uh, tells me this is her favourite cheese. Uh, now I've added the garlic because when I did the uh, cheese a day challenge, I tasted the pickled onion cheese and it was way too overpowering, um, just the, uh, the raw onion flavour. So basically I added in the onion flakes and chives as you normally do for this cheese and I thought, well, a little bit of garlic would probably help the flavour profile of this cheese. I've increased the size of the recipe to 10 litres from 8 and uh, it turned out quite well. So let's have a look and see how we made Cotswold cheese. So the milk I'm using today is Inglenook Dairy's unhomogenized milk. And the ingredients for this cheese is 10 litres or 10 quarts of whole cow's milk, 10 drops of anato diluted in quart of a cup of cool non-chlorinated water, an eighth of a teaspoon of mesophilic culture. I used MO30 uh, from Sacco, a quarter of a teaspoon or 1.25 mils of calcium chloride, diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water, three quarters of a teaspoon or 3.75 millilitres of liquid rennet. I'm using single strength and that's diluted in quarter of a cup of cool non-chlorinated water. I'm also using two tablespoons of non-iodized salt, two teaspoons of dried onion flakes, two teaspoons of dried chives that are chopped and half a teaspoon of garlic powder. So I'm just whisking in the cream there that uh, was on the top of the uh, milk cartons. Just gently whisking that in so it reincorporates back into the milk. And I'm turning the heat on now that I've connected my thermometer. So heat the milk up to 32 degrees Celsius or 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And there we are up at the target temperature or close enough. So just remove all of your utensils. And we're going to add in the mesophilic starter culture. Now, as I said, you can use uh, MO30. You can also use MA11, which is an equivalent uh, starter culture. So we just sprinkled that over the surface and we're now allowing it to rehydrate. So cover your pot and set that aside for five minutes. So five minutes later, I'm just going to stir the cream back in again and stir the culture all the way through the milk, just uh, with a top to bottom motion there. Quick check of the temperature, it's gone up by 0.5 of a degree Celsius, which is okay. And we're going to cover the pot now. now. It was creeping up, so I took it off of my double boiler arrangement there. Now we cover that and we allow it to ripen for 45 minutes at 32 degrees Celsius or 90 Fahrenheit. So 45 minutes later it has acidified enough and we're going to stir the cream back in again. Always floats to the top doesn't it? So during the ripening period what happens is that the lactic bacteria eats the lactose and converts it into lactic acid. 
So just a check of the temperature there. It's cracked up just a little bit, but that's okay. So we're going to move on to the next stage now. So we're going to add the Anato. So this isn't very much. 10 drops really doesn't colour it too much. Just gives it a nice uh, dark yellow colour to the cheese. You can see the milk didn't change colour very much. Now you don't really see the true colour of your cheese until later on when you pressed it. So we're going to add the calcium chloride solution now. Just pour that in and give the milks a good stir. And now we're going to add the rennet to the milk. Let's give that a bit of a swirl. There we go. And give that a stir for no more than one minute. So we're going to cover the pot again. I'm going to allow the milk to set or coagulate for 45 minutes at 32 Celsius, 90 Fahrenheit. So now we're going to check for what's known as a clean break. I'm just popping my knife in and then give it a bit of a twist. And you can see there the, the milk splits very cleanly. Now if this doesn't happen for you, then wait another 10 minutes and check again. So I'm using my curd cutter. Cut the curds into 6mm or quarter inch cubes. So I've just done the horizontals there. Now I'm doing the verticals with my vertical curd cutter. A bit of a move around and that's how I'll get the six millimeter size cubes quite small they are for this cheese so once I think all the curds are cut which I do just remove that I'm going to place the lid back on and allow the curds to heal for five minutes this uh, helps you when you go to stir it they don't all turn to mush so we're going to pop the spoon in and we're going to lift and move the curds around just initially just to make sure they're all cut. They look pretty good to me. And we're going to stir for 20 minutes. Now this is at the same temperature, 32 Celsius, 90 Fahrenheit. We haven't turned the heat on or anything like that. Just gently stirring. And if you do see any big bits, just cut them with the edge of your spoon. That's fairly well cut. So after 20 minutes of stirring, you can see that the curd size has shrunk a fair bit. I'm turning the heat on there because the next step is to gradually heat and raise the temperature to 40 degrees Celsius or 104 Fahrenheit over the period of 35 minutes. And during that time, we're going to stir continuously so that the curds do not mat back together again. So just an initial check, the temperature I'm starting at here, it's dropped back a little bit. It's uh, 31.5 degrees Celsius. Oh, well, 0.6, okay, between mates. All right, um, giving that a gentle stir. So once time has elapsed and we're at the target temperature of 40 degrees Celsius, so I managed to get it right on the nose at 35 minutes. So you just have to adjust the temperature as you're going along. Make sure it doesn't heat up too quickly. Because if you do, it actually induces bitterness into the cheese. So once you're at 40, we're going to stir for another 30 minutes. There we go. So this helps the curd shrink even further and expel more whey. Now the temperature was starting to creep up a little bit there. 
So I made a decision to actually move the pot off of the uh, water bath. There we go. Just move the bottom pot out of the way. Just move that forward so I don't have to stretch. There we go. Now we're going to stir for the final 30 minutes. So 30 minutes later, the curds are very small. Probably about the same size as a baked bean. So we can stop stirring now. I'm going to let this settle down. And the curds will sink to the bottom. Um, do that over five minutes. Pop the lid back on. Keep any dust or fluff out. So after the five minutes, move the pot over to the draining area and we're going to drain through a cheese cloth lined colander. I'm going to allow that to drain for five minutes. Just get all the bits out there with your clean hands. There we go. So five minutes later, I'm going to return the curds to the pot. I'm just using the edge of the cheesecloth and just pick it up and the slab kind of just falls into the pot, nice and simple. You might get a few loose bits on your cheesecloth, but no big deal. Let's give that a bit of a squeeze. We're going to use that again later. The cheesecloth, that is. Now break the slab into thumbnail size pieces. So it's all broken up. So this will take a little bit of time. So once you don't find any more big bits anymore, just a quick wash of the hands and we're going to add the salt. So this is two tablespoons of salt and we're going to mill that through the curds as well. So just be gentle when you mill the salt and the other ingredients through. You don't want uh, too much fat coming out of the curds. So now we're going to add the chives, just two teaspoons there, just sprinkle them on top. And we're going to add the onion flakes, the dried onion flakes as well. Now this is the extra that's not normally in the recipe and that is the garlic powder. So I'm adding a little bit of dried garlic powder, half a teaspoon only. And just sprinkle that over the top. So just gently mix through those three ingredients through the curds. Took about a minute to do that. So just moving everything out the way is popping the pot in the sink. And now I'm preparing my mould. I'm using a 165mm mould, which is a 6 inch diameter mould. So just line that with the cheesecloth you used before to drain the curds. Just pop that over your mould. So we're just going to fill the cheesecloth with the curds. So gently just by hand, you don't need anything special here. As long as your hands are clean. So 
So you get out every single little piece and just get rid of that pot. So what I'm doing there is just pulling the cheesecloth down a little bit to make sure there's no creases in the side of the cheese uh, when it gets pressed. And we're going to press it at 5 kilograms or 11 pounds for 15 minutes. This initial pressing just helps close up the rind so that we can flip it. Now you don't want to press too heavily as you can see there. You will get some fat loss if you press it too heavily. That's why this initial pressing is fairly light. So after that 15 minutes, it nearly fell out because my spring had uh, expanded again and the curds had shrunk obviously. So just pop that out of the press, out of the basket, turn it over, just be gentle because it's not fully compacted and we're going to press at 15 kilograms this time or 33 pounds for 15 minutes. Just pulling down the sides of the cheesecloth again. Pop the follower on top and press. There we go. So remove the cheese from the press again. And it has closed up a lot better so it's not as fragile to handle. Just turn it over. Redress it in the cheesecloth again, pop it back into the mould, pop the follower on top. I'm going to press it uh, 20 kilograms or 44 pounds for two hours this time. And the whey is now draining off fairly clear, which is really good. So after the two hours, remove from the press again. Flip it over, get any fluff off, <laughs> and we're going to press at 23 kilograms or 50 pounds for 24 hours. So this is as tight as my little spring will go in the cheese press. Now I do come back and check it um, every uh, 30 minutes for the first hour, hour and a half, just to make sure uh, to see if it needs tightening again. So after the 24 hours, we're going to remove it from the press. And we're going to place it on a bamboo mat or a plastic mat on a cheese board to help it air dry so that uh, any moisture that does drip off um, has somewhere to go. There we go. Now, I did have some excess on the top from where the follower didn't quite meet the edge of the mould. So I'm just trimming that off to make it look pretty and so that no mould grows in those little cracks. So there it is all trimmed and looking wonderful. Nice even distribution of chives and onion there and you can't see the garlic powder. So after it's air dried uh, for the couple of days uh, then we wax or vacuum pack it and age it at 13 degrees Celsius or 55 Fahrenheit at 80% relative humidity uh, for one to three months and turn weekly for even ripening. Back to Gavin. Well that was Cotswold and you saw it air drying on the rack. Um, I'm going to mature it for about three months. Uh, you can mature it between three and, and six months um, but I'll be choosing the lesser because I want a, less, a, a little bit less mature cheese. Uh, the process was quite simple. Um, it was easy enough. There was a lot of stirring though about an hour and 25 minutes but uh, I've got a really big strong arm now. Anyway thank you for watching Curd Nerds. Uh, if you want to buy the kit for this cheese I recommend the hard cheese kit uh, and you can get that over at littlegreenworkshops.com.au. Well thanks for watching Curd Nerds and I will see you next time.